EA Sports. Big. Greetings, fellow gamers. In today's video, I'm going to build a city for zero dollars in SimCity. Traditionally, in SimCity 4, you have money to start. Invest in roads and houses, collect taxpayer money, and invest in more roads and houses. Instead, today we're going to explore the seamy underbelly of the many exploits and loopholes built into this amazing game to make a city from literally nothing. So grab your popcorn and hold on to your hat, because here we begin at Year Zero. The hardest difficulty started me off on day one with the minimum $100,000 starting money. The first step toward beginning the challenge was to get rid of the money, since it's against the spirit of a $0 challenge to have money. Done. Now that we were really starting from zero, the next step was to f figure out how to get money again. But how the heck do you make money when you don't have any? We're not playing hot dog stand tycoon after all. Normally in SimCity, tax revenue is collected from residents. But what if we can't build residences in the first place since we don't have any money to start? Without taking out a loan, which I honestly think is against the spirit of this challenge, that leaves us with a few other income strategies. We can't charge for transportation since we just don't have any. We can't even make any deals with our neighbors since we have no municipal services to offer them whatsoever. That leaves us with business deals, which we'll get to in a second, but really the one I want to focus in on is city ordinances, where our strategy of minting money out of thin air really begins. Ordinances, after all, are city-wide policies which create either monthly income or expenses. Policies like a smoke detector program to help prevent disastrous fires in our city. A small expense, to be sure, but hopefully helpful in preventing tears later on. Now, the simplest solution to this challenge would be to just legalize gambling. For some reason, you can make a hundred dollars a month extra by just ticking this box in the settings. Yes, a forest and a river where gambling is legal. Highly profitable. But I think that would be a stupid way to start. So instead, we're going even deeper into the red. So we enacted every single policy for our non-existent city. Carpool incentives. There weren't even cars. Tire recycling. Paper waste reduction. Need I say any more? It was all very expensive and completely unnecessary. My advisors were livid with my fiscal policy decision-making. Broke and penniless. It seemed that Loser City was doomed right from the start. My disapproving accountant lady appeared, this time with an offer. We could bail ourselves out by signing the first business deal. Business deals are scripted at events in SimCity, and they're kind of like pacts with the devil. Losing money? Just sign this shady contract to let the federal government dump radiated toxic waste in your town. So they would pay us $400 a month if we agreed. Our answer? Absolutely. By only July of our first year, we had driven ourselves to negative 4,000 simoleons. But with the help of the federal government, we reversed our downward financial trajectory and started making big money, $500 a month, and all just for staring at a radiation dump in the corner. Sure. It went on fire some of the time. Well, it went on fire most of the time, but we responded by building a fire department directly across the street from it, so that any time there was a fire, we could put it out right away. Of course, the fire department was actually very expensive to run at $125 a month, which cut into our profits. So in an act of financial brilliance, I decided to just stop funding it. Naturally, the firemen protested. So only when a fire occurred, I would fund the department. Then they would respond and put out the fire. Then when they got back to the fire station, I'd defund the department again. It was foolproof. Then they'd get back out their pickets and keep protesting again until the next fire, when we'd do it all over again. This was an amazing strategy at earning money. And at the same time, keeping our toxic radiation dump safe and sound. And for the next 200 years, I repeated it over and over again until we had saved up one million dollars. At which point, I decided it was time to start building our city. Honestly, very exciting. So I started laying the foundations, but I didn't really put much effort into it. To tell you the truth, I'm going to destroy this city to make more money, so don't get too attached here. But in the meantime, I built up the farms. I built up the residences. I even built up the water and the stupid infrastructure. When the citizens started rioting, I lowered taxes to 7.2%. People loved it. 
and our population skyrocketed from zero to over 25,000 within just a few years of getting started. And for now, we could lean on all the money we had produced from our toxic waste dump to build up our city. My whole strategy revolves around getting our cash flows in the negative. So unfortunately, we started making money again by collecting too much in taxpayer money. I mean, I don't even think this is very fair in a zero dollar challenge. So I decided to just start lowering taxes again to 2%. You see, the true goal of my strategy was to get our cash flows into the red. Because if you do this with enough population like I did, your account lady returns with more offers. Casino is an amazing attraction that freely generates 300 simoleons of tax revenue per month for zero dollar upkeep. We accepted. And we built it across the river, directly beside the toxic waste dump. I even built safe, sustainable wind turbines to power them and blow the radiation toward the gamblers. We still weren't getting enough offers though. So then I did the unthinkable and I lowered taxes in Loser City to 0% across the board. Then to drive us even further into the red, I started building expensive schools and hospitals, intentionally driving us even further into the red. Naturally, my advisors scrambled. How would we feed the infrastructure? Of course, and right on time, sensing our financial bleed out, my accountant lady returned with more and even shadier offers. Evil Genius's secret base? $380 a month. We'll take it. Top security? Federal prison? $250 a month. Army training base? Slated for construction directly beside the evil villain's lair? $350 a month. Altogether, it added up to 1,780 simoleons a month of completely free income. Of course, I mean, we were hosting a parasitic island of radiation, gambling, convicted felons, an evil mastermind, and the army. But hopefully, the problems would just stay over there. Hopefully. With all that free income, I just decided, you know what, it's time to blow up the whole city and start fresh. I'd made a pretty bad first impression and I wanted to start over. The year was 2258. The ruins of old Loser City stretched out upon the yawning plains like modern day Florida. Piles of trash just all over the place. Exotic, sinister looking wild animals roaming around. Nuclear test facilities, rampant gambling and tourism, and tanks patrolling the roads, all made possible by our amazing 0% income tax. So I decided to get started by building farms all over. That's good, build wide, then we'll build tall. Okay, check. Now that the farms were done, I just had to tighten the budget up. After all, we didn't want to charge our farmers any money they didn't have or put them at financial need. But we'd also need people to farm those farms, so we carved out residences in their midst. You might notice that none of the infrastructure makes much sense. The roads look like crap, but that's just what you get for zero dollars. Fortunately, it was cheap and affordable for our residents, which is important because they were all unemployed. No taxes, no road maintenance. Heck, you might have to climb out of your neighbor's yard just to get to the road. The one thing we did start investing was our fire department now. Gone were the days of picketing, protesting firemen. But only because fires were breaking out in the streets almost every single day. We kept it cheap enough to maintain that we were still making money. Though when people moved to Loser City, they usually didn't stay for long. After an unprecedented start full of rampant construction, almost everyone abandoned their homes leaving only about 1,688 people living in the city. But at the very least, I can say that those people must have really liked it here. I decided that the few remaining citizens had a right to know how their unfortunate civic existences were being funded. So I constructed a, an expensive bridge across to the terrible island on the other side of the river. And upon further examination of the bad roads, I learned that almost all of the residents worked in the neighboring city, which is literally the tutorial embarrassing. So in an act of economic sovereignty and patriotism, I started constructing dirty factories for all the dirty residents of Loser City to work at. Commercial zones. They opened 40 copies of exactly the same place called Bennett Music Corp. And then they just abandoned all of them. This town sucks. Some people's houses are in other people's backyards. The fire department is crashing into the building with the fire and running people down on the way to extinguish it. We even had to open up another fire department across the street to just clean up the mess. Look, I don't like taxes as much as the next person, but 
I want to live. You know, I tried. I tried building a city with zero dollars. I funded it by alternate means, and I tried to keep it cheap and affordable for the residents. But sometimes you just try to fly too high and too close to the sun. And that is why you should give up and accept yourself. I think that's about it. I wanted to end on a positive note, so. Anyway, yeah, I'm Ambiguous Amphibian. Hope you enjoyed. A big thanks to my patrons. They give me all the cash I need to throw out the windows of my limousine. If I had a limousine. <laughs>